Stick to the science, idiots. Biology is your real enemy, not me. I'm just stating facts. Unlike and unfollow. Bye. Fuck my life. Why are we bringing sexuality into science? When you announce the first ever International Day for LGBTQ plus people in STEM, sometimes it's your harshest critics <laughs> that give you the most effective evidence for why such a day was necessary in the first place. So I was here at InspireFest last year, and actually this, it, my talk is sort of a story of how an InspireFest speaker one year can inspire a speaker the following year. And I was here recording the podcast, which we make at Bureau. It's hosted by Claire O'Connell. It's very good. You should listen to it. And we're back again this year. And one of the speakers that we interviewed said something that really resonated with me. That speaker was Arlen Hamilton, and she's back again this year. And she, she said that in her work, she's not afraid to hear no, that she knows it's a numbers game, and that she might just need to knock on 99 doors to hear one yes. And that really struck me because I'd been thinking a lot at the time about doing something, a project or an initiative for people like me, LGBT people who work in science or science communication. And I'd been doing things like I organized a March for Science. This was my poster. The, the, the flag, thank you. Like, the flag is a little wrong, but it's because we were drinking cocktails when we made the banners. <laughs> that is, and I don't really drink, so yeah. Um, I also was doing some work <clears throat> with a group called Queering Museums, who do a lot of excellent work around how queer stories can be told in cultural spaces. And I was working as a science communicator, so I knew what it was to have difficult conversations about science. But in that moment, I realized, actually, I just needed to start knocking on doors. And I did, literally didn't wait that day. So this time last year at InspireFest, I was sort of looking around and I was like, who would be you know, interested in or receptive to a conversation about the experiences of LGBT scientists here in Ireland? And over the coming days and weeks and months, I just got in touch with friends and colleagues. Lots of them are here today. And charities, organizations, universities, scientific institutions. And <clears throat> spoke to them about, you know, this thing that we don't really know much about, which is the experiences of LGBT scientists here in Ireland. And there were some no's, there were some people who didn't get it, and that was difficult, but there were lots and lots of yeses. Lots of people already doing amazing things in their universities or their research institutes, and lots of people who wanted to do stuff. And what I realized was that there was just this need, and it was already sort of happening, but this need for a national conversation about what was happening in Ireland for LGBT scientists. You know, we knew from international research, for example, that engineers and physicists are less likely to be out in their workplace, in their labs, than biologists. Why is that? Is it the same in Ireland? We don't know because we don't have the data. Why does anyone feel that they can't be out in their workplace to begin with? It's awful. I know from experience you spend every minute of every day monitoring, policing, editing your behavior, your words to make sure you don't get found out. We needed to talk about why LGBT students are more likely to drop out of STEM degrees, which we know from US research. Again, we don't know if that happens in Ireland. We need to talk about field work. What happens when you're a scientist who has to do their research in a country where it's dangerous or illegal to be LGBT? Is that another reason why people aren't coming out to their colleagues? Because it creates an extra level of risk, because they might out you on that field trip accidentally. We needed to talk about homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia in STEM workplaces in Ireland. So my contribution to that conversation was to set up this group, House of STEM, and we are a network of LGBTQ plus scientists, uh, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians here in Ireland. And we're working towards improving support for and the visibility of uh, LGBT scientists like ourselves. We have a Slack group where we chat about projects we're working on, that we're planning, 
things that we're doing in our own institutions, in our own areas. We have a mailing list to share resources, news and information to the broader LGBT science community here. We had our first public event in May in Science Gallery Dublin, which was lovely because we got to see each other in real life. And we are excited to announce today we'll have our first collaboration with an artist. Morris Keller will be working with us on a project supported by CREATE. And so it's great. We have this community of people, but one of the things that has happened that I certainly wasn't expecting was that it allowed us to join this incredible international community. Actually, it's more like a family of groups and organizations who are doing the same thing. They're looking at what are the experiences of LGBT scientists, what are the challenges that we face, and how can we address them? And one of those family members I want to mention because they mean an incredible amount to me. They're called Pride in STEM. They're based mainly in the UK, but they have members all around the world. And they organize events like Outthinkers, where you have researchers talking about their the LGBT researchers talking about their research to public audiences. That's actually what our first event was here in May. They've also held it in places like Science Museum in London, which is incredible. They march in pride. But most of all, they're just a community of wonderful, wonderful people who have become sort of colleagues and friends and, and almost a family to me, certainly. And the reason that made such a difference, I, I discovered them, you know, they, they haven't been running that long and they were my introduction to this community, but they meant so much because when I was doing my PhD, I started in 2003, I did a PhD in biochemistry, and there was no pride in STEM, there was certainly no house of STEM, there were no initiatives that there are now like 500 queer scientists or hashtags like LGBT science or queer in STEM. And so I had no role models. I had nobody more senior than me that I could speak to about being out and being LGBT in science, I just didn't know. There was nobody to ask if this would affect my career, if not. And so I did. I, I, I began the lifelong process because you never stop coming out <laughs> to people, to friends and colleagues and family members. And, you know, for the most part, it was a good experience. But then, like a lot of people, again, because I had no role models, when I moved institution to do a postdoc, it felt like going back to square one because it's new people, it's a new experience, it's, you just don't know how it's gonna go. And so what we've decided to do, a group of us, Pride in STEM, House of STEM, Interengineering, Out in STEM, and an incredible group of supporters. We have people like AAAS, Welcome, Science Foundation Ireland, Excite, CERN, Science Gallery, all working together to create LGBT STEM Day, which I am very, very excited about. <laughs> it's gotta be so good. So it happens on the 5th of July. It's if you have a social media account, you can get involved. It's just about raising visibility so that people have role models and a community to, to look to. Um, there are events happening all around the world. Like we get emails every day from people who are saying, we're organizing a speaker event in Brazil or we're having a coffee morning in Vancouver. And it's really incredible. It's, I hope it's gonna be an excellent day and I hope that you'll all get involved because we're doing it for people like this. I was walking down the street on Tuesday when I was assaulted for looking queer. Basically, this has happened to me hundreds of times since I was born, including my STEM workplace. I actually just want to exist. Is that a controversial idea? I'm so glad that there's a day of the year to celebrate this beautiful community. I'm so excited about LGBT STEM Day, I almost can't handle it. Thank you.